Hello, my fellow motion designers. It has been a while since I've posted anything on this channel, but I'm finally back. And the reason why I'm back is because I got bombarded with questions on Instagram. So I found it to be the right time to get back into making videos and to also answer all of your questions. So today I'm going to focus on the most asked question on Instagram, and that is how do you make your lighting? And it's actually pretty simple. It of course varies from project to project, but I've condensed it down to a pretty easy setup so you guys can follow along at home and also a setup that you can use in a variety of different product shots. So this is going to be the first tutorial where I answer your questions because I think there's a lot of people out there that are missing a specific tutorial on something that they do and I really want to help you guys out. So if you have a question that you want to be answered, then comment below or write me on Instagram. And if it's a good question, then I'll definitely make a video out of it. So without further ado, let's just get into this lighting tutorial. All right, so here inside of Cinema, I've just imported a model of a Adidas shoe. This model here is already textured and has uh, nice looking details. I've also just created a camera, so we have a nice perspective here. So let's just go and turn on our render view over here, and then we can lock our camera inside of our render view. We still can't see anything, but we are just going to create some lights now. So let us just create a single light here, and this light here, just gonna put it on the lights, and I'm gonna call it backlight. So let me just scale down a bit to 25 by 25. Then put it as a backlight here. Maybe something like that. Maybe a bit more. I think I need to stretch it out a bit here. And then also let's bump up the strength to like 10. Yeah. So now you can see now we have some really nice lighting going on here. So I always start by making a backlight. And the reason why is that you get some really nice contrast on the shoe here, and we almost get this silhouette look. I mean, I can move it in here so we get more of the front in the frame, right? And then you have like a really nice silhouette shot, and it's much easier when you have this really, really, really dramatic look to go in and like light up details. So the front of the shoe here, the heel of the shoe, maybe the front bottom here of the shoe. So it just really helps you out by establishing some nice shadows to start with. So let's go and duplicate our light here. And let's call it front. And now I want to set this intensity to half the intensity of my backlight. And I also would like to set the spread to 0.5. So I'm just going to do like a small sliver here of light casting onto the shoe and you can already see that we're getting something that looks pretty cool maybe something like this um i want it to be more just on the tip of the shoe um i think if we rotate it like that so now you see now we have a nice fall off here um maybe we can even like crank it up even more no i think 0.5 was actually good all right cool so now we have our front light now we need to make our heel light so we duplicate again and then we can go and place it at the back just like this and our heel light doesn't need to be that strong so i'll set it to two and then we're just going to place it here on the heel just like this here just gonna move it out a bit more just so we create some nice contrast here so what i really want to do here is that i really want a light that's coming from the side especially down here and then we're creating all of these like micro micro shadows so we really can see the texture of the shoe how good it looks because we want all of this detail when we send a style frame to the client 
so they can see how cool the shoe looks. I think that's it for the heel light here. Uh, I think it actually works pretty nicely. Maybe it's too bright, but we'll see when we get a background on it. So let's duplicate the light again. Let's call it bottom light because I actually want a bit of light down here. It, it kind of fades into the background and I really don't like that. So let's bring it down here and let's begin to light the bottom of the shoe here. So just the front bottom. Right, and we can also just bring that down to one. Bring it underneath a bit. So we still keep the same contrast here, but we're just lighting this. As you can see, if we turn it off, we get a big shadow here that doesn't look that good. So we're just lighting this area here so it gets a bit nicer to look at. So the last thing I just want to do is just bring my front light up a bit. It's just so we have a big highlight that's a bit more on the top of the shoe. And I think that's actually it. So now we have all of the lighting done, but we are still missing a background. So I'm just going to create a plane, bring it down underneath my camera here. All right, then I'm just going to press Alt zero while selecting the plane, just to zero out the plane to my camera's coordinates. Then we're just going to turn it 90 degrees, just like that. And then we can just push it out. So we get a background behind our camera. And because this background is underneath our camera, it will always follow along when we move the camera around. So now let's go and create a material here. Let's call it BG for background. Put it onto the plane. And we are going to create a ramp. And then a color correct node. And then we can just delete our material here. So let's plug the ramp into the color correct and the color correct into our output surface. So now we should have a gradient here. Let me just take a look. And yeah, we have a gradient. So I just want to scale this down a bit. So now we can see our gradient over here. And then let's jump into the material again. So now the fun part comes. So now let's go and create some color here in the background. And I'm going for the same kind of beige look that this shoe has. So I think this here should be kind of good, something like this. And then we can go into a color correct node and we can set the level scale to two. Because when we set the level scale to two, it's just going to boost our colors so they get brighter. And that means that we have a gradient now that goes from where. So that means that we have a gradient now that goes from a white color to a deeper color that we chose to black color. So I find that this method here is really good when you want to get some nice looking backgrounds in a really short amount of time. As you can see, if we just bring it up to a really, really vibrant color here, let's maybe take a blue one. Then you can see, then we go from a lighter blue to a darker blue to a black color. So we can also bring it even more up. So now we have like a more crushed gradient and you can see how it looks up here. But then we're starting to get this banding look here. And if you go back to this, then if I zoom in, you can see we're still getting this banding. So how do we fix that? Well, we create a color mix node. And then we create a maxon noise. And let's just preview our maxon noise here. So I'm just going to go into the overall scale here, set it to 1. And I think 0.5 maybe. Just to get like super, super tiny noise. Then I'm going to go into my output options and turn up the contrast to 1. And I can see I still need to do a low scale, something like that. Let's see how it looks without the denoise on. Yeah, so this kind of small noisy pattern here. 
I want to put my gradient into input one, put my color mixer in to my output, then unsolo this, and I'll put this into input two. So now I'm just gonna add a bit of noise to this. And as you can see, this was a bit too much. So let's just go with 0 0.01. Let's see how that looks. 0 0.02. And no, let's go to 0 0.03. And yeah, I think that worked. So if we turn on our dinos again, you can see now we don't have any stepping in our render. So that's pretty nice. All right, so I will just go into my camera now and let's just select our plane here in the background. Then I'll just turn it so we have like a angle here. It looks a bit better. Maybe like this, just so we don't get it that straight up here. So as you can see, now we are actually done. We have a nice looking frame and it only took us around 10 minutes to do. But we're not fully done yet, because this technique here has a really nice trick up its sleeve. So what we can do now when we have this whole setup is that we can duplicate our camera here. Let's jump into the new camera. Let's also hide the old camera, because then we also hide the old background. And then we can just go in and find a really nice frame. Of course, we need to unlock our viewport up here. Then, yeah, let's go and focus in on something. Maybe let's focus in on the front here of the shoe. Maybe we go for something like this, where we just see like the front part of the shoe, the, a bit of light on it. We also see like the hair on it, all of the textures. Then we can just go into a camera. Let's also turn on some depth of field here. And I'm just gonna pull my aperture up a bit, just so we have a bit more in focus. And I'm just gonna pull it up to like 55. I think this is like a really small scene, so that's why. Um, and yeah, as you can see, here we have another style frame of the shoe. So let's just go and click the snapshot. Then we can go and create another camera. Let's also hide the old camera. Let's jump into the new camera and let's go up here. Let's maybe do a shot like this. I don't know, something where you have the logo. And then I, of course, also want to like turn around my background a bit, maybe move it a bit up just so it follows along and just so it, it doesn't look the same in every single image. Then let's just focus in on this Adidas logo here. We can also move it a bit to the side just so we get it a bit more of a nicer angle here. When it's rendered, then we can just press another snapshot. Let's duplicate it again. Let's go and hide the old camera here. And let's go underneath the shoe. We can also rotate this like 180 degrees. So I just want a really nice close up of the logo here. And let's also go and change the background a bit while we can see the background nicely. So something like that. Let's go into the camera. Let's set the focus point here. Yeah, as you can see, this is the Adidas logo here. Looks pretty nice, but it's a bit too bright. So I just want to go into my backlight here, turn it a bit down, maybe something like this. Um, let's turn it a bit up again. Yeah, I think that's a bit better. So now you can see, now we have a pretty nice logo here on the bottom of the shoe. Let's also save that. So as you can see here, we have created four style frames in a record breaking time. And I have to say they look pretty good and they're ready to send out to the client to get some feedback on. So this is really where this setup shines. All right, so I hope that answered your question about how I do my lighting. And if you want to see more tutorials like this, or if you have any questions that you want to get answered, then please hit me up on Instagram, or you can also write to me down in the comments here. 
And if you're struggling with any technique right now and you just need a answer, I'm always there. I'll answer your questions and even make a video about it. So until next time, go down and subscribe so you don't miss out if your question gets answered. And also you can like the video if you liked it. If you don't like it, then give it a dislike. But I think I only have one thing left to say, and that is go out there, make some awesome, awesome videos. And I'll see you next time here on the channel for some more motion design magic. Goodbye.